I am really <coughs> over delighted that in France we have so many visitors as well as French surgeries. That shows the collectivity, the collectivity which attracts all of you from all over the places and that you try to enjoy that collectivity. But the basis of collectivity, the foundation of collectivity is very deep. And the deep understanding can only tell you that the basis of collectivity is detached love. Love is the only way. It's not possible to have collectivity unless and you have, unless and until you have detached love. French have been good at so many types of love that they have been talking about. And they have written books after books, novels after novels, and have created lots of romantic and unromantic and all kinds of atmospheres <coughs> to talk of love. But the pure love, as we understand in Sahaja Yoga, is to be now expressed by Sahaja Yogis among themselves. So there should be no misunderstanding between us of any kind. But we must know what sometimes makes us a little different. If we can understand the problems that we face, then it would be much easier for us to see why our love becomes so attached and not so detached. starts becoming smaller and smaller, then a person just starts loving oneself only. One of the main reasons that we have this problem is because of our conditionings. We are conditioned the way that we don't know how to love. When I see the advertisements in the West, I don't know from where, from where the West starts and where it ends and from where the East ends. But they talk of West and East, but I don't know which is the demarcating line. Can anybody tell me that? Where do we start East and West? Because it's one round world, you see. But somehow or other, there is some line, unknown line, underlying line, <coughs> which creates sometimes this east and west, two types of conditionings. So when I see some advertisements, they show about, recently I saw about James Bond that he is free to kill and the best film for revenge. This is the advertisement. If revenge is the best way of fulfillment, then how can we love someone? So this kind of conditioning comes to us from outside. That we should not forgive anyone. We should take the revenge. And if you do not take the revenge, then you are not worthy your name. So history shows also the same things. 
that one had to take a revenge of another person who has harmed you in any way, troubled you. I think it's the quality of a snake, they say. That if you step onto any snake, it follows you all his life to take the revenge. The only thing that it does all its life is to run after that person who has, by mistake, put the foot on its body. In the same way, a human endeavor I have seen in so many novels is suggested how a man gets after a person who has some way or other harmed. If we go on like this, there's no end to it. Firstly, it is absolutely absurd for that I will give you an example of Buddha. Very much I have been impressed by the way he said once, to somebody who insulted him and abused him and said all kinds of horrible words. Then Buddha went to another village. Now this fellow felt the remorse and he went back. Went back and said, Sir, I'm sorry, I've said these things to you. I'm really very sorry. He said, what? Well, he said, yesterday. He said, yesterday is finished now. You are now with me today. So what are, why are you talking about yesterday? It's finished. So with this kind of idea that somebody has harmed us, somebody is horrid to us, we linger on in the past.